Hello everybody, welcome back to another session of Stitch With Me. Uh, you guys really seem to like it when I uh, chatted with you last time, so I guess we will keep doing that. <laughs> okay, so let's see where I want to start here. Let's see if I have any small pieces for this bit. Getting closer to halfway done on this project. That'll be exciting. 47.5% right now. I love how Pattern Keeper keeps track of that for you. So this is a section with a lot of confetti, so We'll see how much I get done. Forgot where I put my scissors again. Hope you all are having a good day. It's finally warmed up here, which is nice. Yeah, we do get to minus 50, but fortunately that doesn't usually last very long. If it was that cold all the time, I'm not sure I could stand living here. <laughs> attempt to anyway. Ah, there we go. Come on. Oh my gosh, there we go. Good. Those pieces are still long enough to do some more single stitches. Yeah, it is going to be a lot of changing colors in this section because we have almost no stitches that are the same color beside each other. It is really, really staggered. But as much as I complain about confetti, it's always worth it in the end. When you look at that finished project and all those little details are showing funny like I've made it myself and yet when I step back and look at the whole thing it's still like wow I made that holy cow how did I do that <sighs> which is always fun it's amazing how one little x at a time really adds up to make something stunning to camp today. <laughs> Not very good with this hobby. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Just as long as you don't yank on it, you can usually... Oops! Ha! <laughs> Tease a uh, already threaded one through, but then if you do that, you unthread it again. Ooh, silly me. Yeah, this is a section where I don't leave as many needles on the threads because 
at that point, it becomes more work. And we're doing so much untangling that it's more work than just unthreading it and then re-threading it when you need it. Some people don't like this method because of all the threading, which I understand, but I got used to it. I was almost going to park this in the wrong place. I'm sure glad that I double checked. Yeah, I was thinking that's not what's parked there that it says on my pattern should be parked there. So this one, I'm just again tacking it down because this is a short thread and they don't stay as securely as the longer threads. So I want to make sure that they don't come loose. So I got quite a few videos that I've been working on coming up about um, how I wash and iron a finished piece to prepare it for framing, and also uh, how I turn my works into wall hangings instead of framing them. So they kind of look like tapestries. and it is a lot cheaper than framing. Plus there's a part of me that's a bit of a control freak about it. I am so nervous I would hand something over to a framer and that they would botch it and wreck it. <laughs> this way, if I finish it myself, I have complete control over it. Another one parked at this color. I'm going to see how long it is. Uh, that is a substantial piece, so. Just deciding what I'm going to do with this. Yeah. Sort of give them their own paths until they are used up. made another little project that I will be posting videos of but it was a gift for someone so I'm gonna wait till uh, they receive it I've mailed it out uh, before I post videos of it so I don't wreck the surprise <laughs> just in case they decided to watch my channel I don't want to wreck the surprise for them so this is only enough for one more so when I get to these other H stitches, H single stitches over there, I will be joining another thread as per usual. Okay. Splitting threads here, my goodness, there we go. So that's why sometimes, yeah, I don't always go from top left to bottom right, or sometimes I go bottom right to top left. Just sort of any way that's not going to pull the threads that are already in the holes out of place, because that can happen. And I care more about how my front looks than how the back looks. Don't 
generally show people the back. And the people I have shown the back have actually said it's pretty neat looking, so I'm quite happy with it. And a lot of threads of this color. They are quite scattered, as you can probably see. Okay, so once again, I'm going to dig through, see how long the other ones are. Okay, those are fairly decent amounts. Is that the right color? Okay, there we go. That was the right color. Yeah, those are all actually fairly decent lengths. So I may just actually tie this one off because I have so many. Those other threads will be enough to do the stitches and they are closer to those stitches. So yeah, no point in carrying this one a long, long ways and just wasting I saw at the fabric store they had these little rings with thread cutters on them. Maybe I should get one of those, except I would probably forget to put it on my finger before I started stitching. So I would still be in the same boat of needing to cut a thread and not having the implement I need to cut it. <laughs> hmm. That one, I'm going to tuck away. Is it in, oh, parked it in the wrong spot. There we go. Yeah, we don't want the, uh, that will be confusing. Oh, there's just a couple of this color over here by itself, so I think I'll just do them next. Uh, I don't really work in rows, just let the colors tell me what to do. piece will be long enough for those two stitches in that corner. Oh, line that up. Being a mite stubborn. There we go. Ugh. Yeah, my last video took a while because for some reason YouTube did not want to put any captions on it. I usually go in and fix the automatic captions, but it didn't want to give me anything to work with, so I had to make them from scratch. <laughs> but I'm someone who likes to use captions on things. I'm not hard of hearing, but I have um, auditory processing issues where sometimes I hear the words and my brain just doesn't want to make any sense of them. <laughs> I know they mean something, but I can't figure it out, and having the caption there helps keep me from having to keep rewinding stuff to try to catch what somebody said. So I would be a big hypocrite if I didn't make sure that my stuff was accessible too with proper captions. So I promise I will always try to do that. If you ever find a mistake, you know, let me know and I'll be happy to fix it. I was actually quite annoyed um, even some of the major network channels are really bad for having proper captions. Some of them are laughably wrong or just they make no sense. It's got a few letters of one word and then a few letters of a word that's at the end of the next sentence stuck together. It makes absolutely no sense. And uh, is this parked correctly? I think I put it too many stitches over or maybe I forgot to do one. Let me see. Or am I even looking in the right spot? Oh, you see, I was looking at the wrong set of threads. I was in the wrong. Um, so yeah, that's something I got to be careful not to do to myself. I was looking up here and on my pattern, I was down here. That's why things weren't matching up. So I always work down in um, six big squares, 60 rows. So that kind of helps me. I know that I stopped at line 180 and then I can look and see where's line 190, one, line 200, and match it up on my uh, on my pattern. So I'm less likely to mess it up. Of course, it still happens sometimes, right? But 
hopefully keeps it to a minimum. Yeah, and I've kind of been working on this enough. I can memorize most of the colors without even looking at the legend. Like I know the number three is 414 and so, and I know exactly what shade of thread that's going to be. So let's see, this one is big enough to loop up and around. Dig through. No, that's a little one. So yes, that's right. I, re I remember I decided earlier I was going to start a new thread for those ones there. So let us pull out a new thread. back so I know which color they are. Yeah, because I use multiple needles, I like to buy these, um, I found a, a tube of like is it a hundred or five hundred even on Amazon? So I won't be running out of needles for a while. There we go. Yeah, I remember the days when I had only one needle and I would use it until it was completely tarnished probably should have been replaced long before. Now when they start to get discolored, I just discard them or snaggy, I start, I just discard them and begin again with a new one. take this one over to the right and then do its own one for that lone one in the corner. I'm sure I can find a little piece. Yep, there we go. For that one. I actually managed to squeak out the very last bit of thread out once by actually threading my needle backwards. So I turned it and pushed the eye back through and then threaded it along the back using the eye. And uh, it wasn't fun, but I got every last usable bit out of that piece of thread. All I had was one half stitch left and I was not going to add another thread if I could help it. And I won. <laughs> Play, I played thread chicken and I won. Only got one strand through the eye. That will not work. My gosh. Okay. I think I'll need to trim it and start with a fresh edge. Perfect. So, yeah, I'm usually a monogamous stitcher, but I had to make that gift for someone. 
one thing I don't like about switching between projects is that the same symbol could be attached to a different color in a different project and then uh, you can mix yourself up. So there's no standard of course because there's just too many co more colors of thread than there are symbols so yeah it has to just can't have a standardized which would be nice but yeah there aren't enough symbols for that so switching between projects got to pay a little more attention make sure you weren't using the wrong color Although another reason I don't switch between projects a lot is I only got one floor stand and wrestling the frame in and out of it is not so great. So I don't switch very much. Lots of one stitch in park, then another stitch in park. This confetti can't last forever, right? It's funny, I complain about confetti, but then when I get to great big blocks of color, I get kind of bored, so. <laughs> Ooh, grass is always greener, right? Ooh, okay. 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 So either way with this color, we're gonna end up with a bit of carrying just because of the way it's scattered about, but that's okay. smooth so let's just smooth that out with another needle there we go even though probably nobody would notice it but me right yeah I'm just really finicky <laughs> about that kind of stuff And then I just tacked that down along the back since the stitches between these two were already done just to make sure that that carry is secured and isn't going to get pulled out of place. Okay, so kind of working my way back up until this diagonal is done as you can see. So let's see if that one is enough to do these edges. There we go. Yes, this is a, that's why I was waiting because I don't want to add another thread when this one will do. There we go. Yes, and then do these three that are hugging this corner here. Now that one was pulling a little loose. So I just tightened it up again. Put that there. And that's right on the line. So I think I'm going to just unthread that and leave it for when I do. Oh, goodness, I can't seem to park today. For when I do back finger. 
Oh my goodness. I can usually do it with the side of my thumb, but I guess for some reason it didn't like it that time. Where did I get that? I did use a stylus for a while, but I found it was actually slowing me down stopping to pick it up and then putting it down. So I just switched to using my finger. <laughs> okay, and another one that I can leave for the next section. So that's down two stitches yep so all of these are sort of past that line so i'm just going to free them yeah i don't know why i left that one threaded and then just tuck them all out of, out of my way i'm sure i remarked that i parked that there hmm So yeah, the piece I made as a gift was not a full coverage piece. It was a bit of a gear change in my head to go back to stitching uh, without parking. It's been a long time since I stitched a piece that wasn't full coverage. Like, years. Like, eight years or something like that? Yeah, it's it's... Once you start full coverage, it's like uh, chips, right? You can't do just one. There's just so many stunning pieces. Not enough time. I'm trying to keep myself from buying any more patterns because I have enough for the next at least 10 years of stitching. Maybe even more. Oh, am I putting that in the correct? Oh, see, I went and I looked and I saw this one and I realized this was the wrong color. That's when I realized I put this in the wrong spot. So yeah, always double checking. So there's that grid. That's another reason I like stitching my grid is I can see the lines even after I've stitched those areas on like pre-gridded fabric and it gives me more landmarks to help keep myself in the correct spot. So stitching a grid on does take some time, but in the end it saves me time because I'm not screwing up as much and having to pull stuff out. I will make a video at some point of how I do my gridding. Did I mix up these threads? I think I may have parked these opposite what they should be, or am I in the wrong spot again? That is an H, but yeah, let's see. No, I'm in the correct spot, I think. Or am I down? Yeah, that's right. So see, that's why it didn't match again. I don't know why I keep mixing this up today. I Good thing I'm paying attention though. <laughs> yep. That was the wrong color. Yeah, because I keep mixing up where I am. There we go. Okay. Yes, because I left that other H stitch that is up there. Yeah, so I had H and then the black square with the hollow circle. And then this one down here, the way I just did was the opposite. The black square with the hollow circle above the H stitch. So yeah, they were mixed up, but it was because I was in the wrong place. 
So before I ever unpark the threads that I think are parked incorrectly, always, always double check that I am actually working in the correct big square of 100 and not mixing myself up. Check that I actually made a mistake before attempting to fix the mistake. Otherwise, you may be making an even bigger mistake. <laughs> This is another one past the line. So unthread and tuck away. If I have any short pieces of that for those couple of stitches by themselves. Yes, I do. So actually, I'm going to leave this one that's already parked here because, yeah, I won't be carrying it as far. And using more thread in it just seems to, it'll work better if I carry that one over to the right and just do a new one here for these few scattered ones by themselves. Oh, except... If I do that, it's not right against the edge for those other stitches, so I'm going to just put that aside, and I will come back to it after. Yeah, because I don't like to do stitches out of order if I can help it. So here we are. Let's see if I can get this free. I did. Ta-da! Okay. And then do these crosshair stitches. I name the symbol sometimes <laughs> in my head. Leftover habit from having worked on paper. I don't really need to uh, so much now that the app does all the work for me, but still remember the old names I gave a lot of them. There we are. Okay, so now we're going to do this crescent moon. And then we're going to do that one that I threaded the piece for. Because that way I did not close anything. Again in the next diagonal, so there you go. Hmm. A lot of this double forward slash stitches. Now oh, this is a area on a chart that's like um trees in bloom. So that's why there's so much confetti, but it looks Quite nice when it's done, I think. Very pretty. Mm -hmm. There we go. Create a loose zone.
Okay, this may be just enough for one stitch and then we may have to start a new thread later. I think it'll be enough for one more. When I get down to this one here, I will do it with that one and I will start a new thread for these other four that are there. Okay. How long is this piece? It's a fairly long piece. And I'm thinking I'm going to be carrying that one. Yeah, I'm going to start another piece with a short piece for those two that are over sort of to the right more. Because trying to do it with the piece I already have is going to cause a lot of crossing back and forth, which I don't like doing. It uses up too much thread. So. That's what I keep all these little bits and bobs for. lost my loop. Here we are. Right, and then this is the one that was one lone stitch by itself. That we will end off. and then I have one down here. How long is it? Did I park two in the same spot? No, I didn't. Okay, I've done that before and that that was not right. Okay. Oh, this is a longer one. All right. This is a shorter one. Yeah, perfect then. This will end off and the other one will carry on. Funny. Sometimes I plan this whole big long path I'm going to do with this parked thread, then I pull it up and it's like, oh, <laughs> it's only long enough to do two stitches. So much for that. So much for that plan. to do that other stitch but then I will be tying it off because it's too long of a carry for more stitches after that. I go an inch maximum with my travels, sometimes less, but to carry on with. Okay, I'm ready to go for the next diagonal. Okay, so I'm not going to do these these two H stitches. I'm going to do this whole row sort of leading up to that second stitch because then I can do those two at once. So let's take a look at this. length again. Okay. We're back 
to this one that I said I will tie off once I get to it. Lots of pink in this area. I guess this is some kind of fruit tree, flowering fruit tree in the picture. Maybe cherry blossom or something. Those are always so pretty, hey? Don't have many of them around here, but where I grew up, we had, we lived in a place that had a cherry tree in the backyard for a while. It was so nice. Beautiful white blossoms. The summer kind of snow was gorgeous. Plus, hey, <gasps> Fresh cherries. Now where I live, I actually have an apple tree and I make juice and jam out of the apples. I will actually make a video at some point when I make this year's juice to show people how I did it. It took me quite a while to uh, perfect the process of it, but I've been doing it for Geez, about eight years now, I think. Yeah. I don't really think it saves any money over buying store-bought juice, but it was, my tree produces so many apples and I could not give them all away. And I just, I didn't like the idea of them all just being wasted and composting. They won't take them at the food bank because they're perishable. And like my tree produces like three to 4,000 apples a year. It's, yeah, it's, it's a lot. And I, I hate wasting, so. Although it's starting to die on me. So I planted a new one and it actually finally produced some fruit last year. I got a dozen apples off it. I was getting a little worried because I planted that one, oh, seven years ago. And they said three to five years to start producing fruit. And I hadn't seen a single blossom on it or anything. And I was starting to get a little nervous. It was never going to uh, produce any fruit. But uh, last year... I don't know, some kind of switch got flipped and it uh, started producing, and not just like teeny ones, like nice big baseball sized apples. So that was really nice. So hopefully by the time my original tree is completely kaput, the new one will be even bigger and producing a decent amount. It's a dwarf trees so they said it takes like uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 years to reach its full height and that they live anywhere from 25 to 50 years depending it's a goodland apple it's really good for this um area where we get the super cold winters it's bred for it and uh in fact the years that we get a decent cold snap that lasts for a couple of weeks usually that spring summer we end up with a really good batch of apples when we don't get a really good freeze it doesn't seem to do as well i had one year we had just the brutalest cold snap ever um it was like almost three weeks long and that year that tree produced so many apples i got 90 liters of juice out of it it was unreal i usually get 40 to 60 but yeah Oh, that was one big batch. It's actually easier than you might think to do. It's just, it's very time consuming, so. Kind of nice too i like to make it i uh can it full strength instead of um watering it down i can it as concentrate and then we have a soda stream machine so you can add sparkling water to it and get sparkling apple juice which is so nice i have 
have to say it tastes way better than the bottled sparkling apple juice you can get at the at the uh, grocery store. Plus no preservatives, right? So yeah, when the time comes, watch for that around September. We get a late harvest with that one. They're not really ready until last week of August, first couple weeks of September. So I'll be making my juice then and I'll post a video of how I do it. from that corner and go away. Right, so I have a multiple of this. I think this one and then let's see how long this one is. So this one's a bit longer. So yeah, I'm just going to tie this one off. This is still long enough to do a few more, so I will save this piece for when I have just a couple of stitches in an area. Still we're going on the section. Oh, I forgot to mark that there's a thread parked there. Luckily, I remember that I parked one there. Yep, and it's just enough for the one. too much resistance on the back that time yeah couldn't push it through there we go and that piece is too short so into the ends jar it goes yeah i saw where some people actually um they had a jar of all the little snipped ends that they had done through it, they actually saved it. It looked really neat, actually, to see all the rainbow of colors in there. It's kind of cool. I just throw mine away. But yeah, especially where I saw one where somebody did it there, someone who likes to stitch the extreme cross country where they do all of each color as they go. So they had like this really cool rainbow effect in their jar of thread ends because they'd started from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other. It was really cool looking. It reminded me of those um, sand art jars we used to do when we were kids with the different colors of sand and stuff. I don't think they make those anymore. At least I haven't seen them in a long time. Yeah, they were really pretty. And park. Least of Alrighty, it's the, oh, I need an entire new piece of the envelope. Oh, and it looks like that is the last piece, so I'm going to have to set that aside to get a new hank and cut it up so that it's ready to go next time. That's what I always do when I get to the last piece that's in my envelope. I grab a new hank and... it up so I don't have to interrupt my stitching next time. So I kind of do that next time I have to get up to go get a drink or something. Okay, so 
then I'm going to park that there. I'm going to do this uh, last oops, shamrock stitch that's here, and then I can do a whole bunch of that other one that I dropped. I say a whole bunch, but it's three. <laughs> but uh, compared to this section, three next to each other is kind of a bunch because it's, yeah, this is a very confetti heavy section. Guinea pig is talking to me. Oh, she's hoping I'm going to give her more veggies, but she's already had, just had them. She is one greedy little thing. You know, it's funny. I actually saw this great meme that said, uh, it's easy to have the courage of a lion. They have huge claws and no natural predators. It said, instead, have the, um, the courage of the guinea pig, which has no natural offensive or defensive capabilities, but will scream at an ape a hundred times its size when its lettuce is too wilty. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've had this guinea pig for the last six years, and I can tell you, yeah, she, she will let you know when she wants to be fed. Yeah, there she goes. Oh, I do have this one in my working tray. I thought I didn't. Okay. Well, perfect. One end's too long, so I pull the other. Now that end's too long. Hmm. There we go. lot of threads again so let's see what we've got here yeah that's fairly long this one is shorter I know yeah so many stitches of this color I can use them all there we go Okay, so now I finally filled all these in. I can do those two H stitches in a row like I talked about before. Which, let's see what we're gonna do. These heart, that's not that long. Yeah, how long is this piece? Yeah, that's longer. So we're gonna use this one for the parking. The other one will be tied off. Hmm. 
there. So we successfully worked our way back towards those two stitches. Hello. Let's see. I think I unthreaded that, but no biggie. Okay, just about time for me to head out to uh, pick up my kiddo from school, so I'm just gonna do one more, park it, and we will call it a day. Alright, so thanks for joining me today, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!